We continue our reading in the book of Revelation with chapter 5 today. And in this chapter, we see revealed to us the God who is worthy of being worshipped and the ways that he has earned the right to be the judge of this world. As Matt talked about in his reading from chapter 4, when we look around the world and we see the injustice and the oppression, the evil that is so prevalent in our culture, it feels like the beasts are running the show. And as a result, we long for the day that God will show up in great power and will judge the world. We long for the day when God will judge those evildoers of all of the evil that they have done. And so in this chapter, we see this described as this scroll being taken out that's going to announce the one who is worthy of judging the world. And the one who is worthy of judging the world at first is described as a lion, the lion of Judah. And when I hear these words, and I imagine the people of the day when they first heard these words, imagining God coming like a lion to judge the world would probably conjure up images of something terrifying and something powerful, able to tear apart its enemies. But when the scroll is opened, what we find out is that the one who is worthy of judging the world is also the one who has given his life for the world. Because it's not the lion, but rather it's the lamb of God that is revealed. And when I read this, it floods my soul with hope because the one who judges the world is the one who gave his life for the world. Because there's a part of me that when I think about God judging evil in the world, when God judges injustice and oppression, when God judges sin, I know that that also means that God will come to judge me because injustice, evil, oppression, wrongdoing, those aren't just things that happen out there in the world. There are things also going on in my own heart, in my own life. And there are plenty of things that God can and will call me to account for. And so when God comes to judge me, I would be very afraid of having to face the lion. But to know that the lion is also a lamb gives me a comfort. It gives me a hope that there is strength in the judgment to come, but there is also mercy and there is also grace. And the fact that the one who will judge the world is also the one who gave his life for the world causes me to want to worship God. And so the rest of this chapter, actually, it's filled with beautiful expressions of worship where it shows that the Lamb of God gave his life not just for one tribe of Israel or just the nation of Israel, but the Lamb of God has given himself for the whole world. And as a result, people of every tribe, language, nation, and tongue will come to worship Jesus. And there are beautiful expressions of worship and of his worth-ship, meaning his worthiness of being worshipped. Jesus is described as being worthy of receiving power and wealth and wisdom and might. He is the one who is worthy of receiving blessing and honor and glory and praise forever and ever. So as we read this chapter and as we evaluate our own lives and as we lament over the evil in the world, let us take hope in knowing that one day God will come in strength and in power, but also in mercy and in love to be the strong and merciful judge of the world, who is not just the lion, but also the lamb. And that is a God who is worthy of worship. And so today I encourage you to take time to worship the lamb.